Cabin crew, prepare for takeoff. Mission aborted, smoke everywhere. Decision when to terminate the flight and divert. This day started like most of my other chosen flying days. Early morning, blue sky and light winds. This morning, we're going to follow the sun. Why? Because we're going to Fraser Island and that's where Fraser Island is. And the sun is looking spectacular this morning. I've just missed it, it was really quite red a moment ago, which means there's a bit of smoke around. But yeah, we're going to circumnavigate, can I say that? We're gonna fly the perimeter of Fraser Island. Today's journey will be 350 kilometers, around about 220, no, that's not right. It's about 200 miles anyway, uh, 200 nautical miles, and it will take me almost three hours. So let's go, let's get going and uh, Get in the air. But I terminated this, the first attempt flight to circumnavigate Gari Fraser Island in my microlight. You'll be pleased to know though, I did eventually complete the flight on my third attempt a few weeks before producing this video. That episode comes later. Oh, and in future episodes, I'll try and answer some of your questions while I'm flying around. So fire at will into the comments section below. And that leads us to this. It is so hard even with aeronautical meta advice, meta meteorological area report, to know and guess from a ground perspective exactly what the visibility is like when up flying in the sky. And is it going to improve or worsen as the hours tick by while we fly or as we wait on the ground? Can you tell in this shot what the visibility was like? I couldn't. I just thought a little smoke, no big deal. Uh, wind is from the south, but we can probably roll straight out of here, I reckon. And, and uh, camera's rolling, yes. Okay. 44 degrees, we're going to roll, we're going to take off straight down 3.5, climb to... So when should you turn back or divert to another airport? The answer to that is coming up in my conclusion of this video. Don't miss this important information. After takeoff, the visibility gradually reduced and several warning signs made me feel uneasy. Should I press on or keep going? It was time to use my instincts and common sense and draw upon my experience in aeronautical air law knowledge. It's got some sort of weird, is it smoke? Is it too smoky? We have to take care of one of my hotel, testing for runway 35, departure to the northwest for Bunsberg, climbing to 4000. Traffic Montreal 6340 is climbing uh, through 700 for 1500. Now we're we'll turning right to track east for uh, Fraser Island 1500. Very much My mind was running a million miles an hour. I had to climb away to join circuit and return for landing. I only got to 300 feet and already I was experiencing some very difficult decisions and that's why I needed to rejoin the circuit I can't join the circuit if I'm at 300 feet I have to keep climbing and hopefully I'd be in clear air above the smoke so that I can prepare to land if I can see the runway if there was any clear air that is I thought I'd climb above it all and fly east and, and I should get clear of the smoke. I used my navigation flight plan and compass for directions. Surely I can still continue with my mission. I continued my climb to four and a half thousand feet 
I only wanted to go to 1,000 feet today. Okay, it's probably mar very marginal. I don't think this is actually legal. I've never seen this before. Where is it coming from? Can we get across the Sandy Straits? I was above the smoke and into the clear air finally at four and a half thousand feet. But the ground was hard to see. The horizon was impossible to see. I changed my mind several times about continuing or terminating the flight. I, until, until I realized this was too stupid and the smoke was as far as the eye could see in all directions. Okay, I'm calling it. It's too smoky, or is it? I don't know. Can we get to the island? Really not sure. We're tracking 9-0 for Kingfisher. We'll go to River Heads and we'll see what it's like. It was time to return to the runway. I'd finally come to my senses. I could almost see where it should be. I could not see the airport. Fortunately, if I lost complete situational awareness, I had an iPad with my flight planned route and airport location clearly indicated. It's a disaster, I'm out of here. I also had a compass, radio, flashing lights and landing light. All are important to hear and communicate with other aircraft in the area nearby. I couldn't stop thinking about the possibility of another aircraft nearby. Righty, well that did not go to plan, um, unfortunately. Wow. What a totally messed up sky. Everything's a mess. And why is that? Are we in Canada right now? Have you seen what's happening in Canada? Well, this is like that now. I can't believe it. We'll be joining for a downwind runway 17 this morning. I have the airfield in the sight. Okay, traffic Bravo, November X-ray, and airman, just taking for runway one month, coming back. And my hands are even getting cold already. Flight time, eight minutes. Woohoo! Traffic Bravo, 6340 is two miles to the east at uh, 2200. I will be inbound to join base, runway 35, punch and go, Bravo. Traffic track 6340 joins base, runway 35, touch and go, Mirabara. Yeah, correction, uh, runway 17, base three, uh, 6340, Mirabara. Mirabara traffic track 6340 turns final, runway 17, touch and go, Mirabara. I landed safely and the low level smoke was okay below 1,000 feet. So I decided to do a touch and go.
Mirror Rock traffic, drive 6340 is downwind, runway 17, full stop, Mirror Rock. Mirror Rock traffic, drive 6340 turns base 17, full stop, Mirror Rock. a short flight this morning total flight times 20 minutes and uh, yeah we got a couple of uh, landings in there but I uh, did not expect that amount of smoke if any so um, yeah unfortunately you get perfect weather and then you get the perfect storm don't you we'll have to try the Fraser Island lap another time I'm away for another week now so why is my, why is that hangar door open? Well, that was interesting. Once back safely at the hangar, I discussed this situation with my hangar buddy who was about to fly away to a coffee morning. I told him it wasn't going to be a good idea to fly. From the ground, it looked okay. He and some others were going to fly to a regular coffee fly-in to the west of the airfield. After some phone calls to people that lived in the area he was flying to, he fortunately chose not to go. We had coffee locally instead. We came up with several ideas which are obvious and logical common sense. Decide before you fly when you should terminate the flight before you fly. And here's my guide. Of course I learned this from my current experience. Just, you know, I thought through it. This makes sense to me now. If it looks bad from the ground, probably don't take off. You shouldn't depart the airfield because getting back is going to be difficult. When you cannot see the horizon, when you cannot see the ground from your elevation, when the METAR says the visibility is below 5,000 metres, any other reason that would make the flight mission impossible to complete successfully. My planned mission would have failed on this day anyway because smoke in the Kagari Fraser Island photos and video is not cool. I wanted the scenery, I wanted to capture some beautiful ocean water shots and beaches. Smoke not going to work. So, why bother? Abort. Leave it for another day. I hope this helps you. Be prepared to return and make the decisions on the ground before you get emotionally overcommitted in the air about the flight. That's when bad decision making occurs. Be a good decision maker and stay safe. For more information, there is an excellent publication in Australia for Australian aviators called the Visual Flight Rules Guide. Get that, have a look at it, it's free. Don't forget to send me some questions and uh, in the comments and I'll answer them in my flight if they're appropriate to, um, to answer, if it's aviation related. Let's do this and let's have some fun. See you later.